Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildry Garden. And in this video, I just want you to take a few moments out of your day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, save this video for later if you can't watch it now, because I want to just give you some inspiration, something that I hope is going to brighten your day. And that is the creation of what I know now is one of the most vital habitats for wildlife after making these habitats for the last 20 years and just witnessing firsthand how much life can be attracted to a wildflower meadow. Now this area is one that I created 14 years ago now in 2010 and it's absolutely alive. As you can probably see, it's gone eight o'clock in the evening. I don't even know the time because time is irrelevant when you are somewhere like this and absorbing yourself in nature, which is what I strongly recommend you do. And if you can't get out, if you don't have any green spaces local to you, then hopefully this channel will be everything you need to keep you sane in today's world because there are lots of videos over 350 videos now on the channel so do hit that subscribe button and like this video if you enjoy it at the end because hopefully this channel will give you lots and lots of inspiration and ideas for your own green space your own garden your own balcony and much much more and i hope that this message reach, reaches a wide audience now, this meadow, as I say, is 14 years old and it was an old potato field. And when I stripped the topsoil off, uh, the idea being that I would get down to those poorer subsoil layers so I could create this, what it is today, which is, of course, my profession, something that I've been doing, as I've said, for 20 years. So if you are looking for anything like this, wherever you are around the world, then do get in touch. I'm happy to work as a, as a consultant or indeed get my hands dirty and make something like this for you but they really are wildflower meadows. They really are an incredible habitat for wildlife. So as I say, this started as a potato field and it is now an absolute wildflower and wildlife haven. You can probably hear some of the birds around me, all the greenery you can see in the distance back there and over here is all planted with native trees and shrubs from all the topsoil that are removed off this site, which is now home to birds such as that chiff chaff up there and a chaffinch and I've just swallowed a flight <laughs> which is obviously a case in point um, so yes it's an incredible habitat we've got black cap yellow hammer white throat that now breed along this native tree and shrub belt and this is only one acre so and I know not everybody has an acre I don't have an acre myself but it is something that we can look to create on a much much smaller scale because wildflowers to me they are the basis of all life they are where it all starts I know people say the insects are the bottom of the pyramid but wildflowers are below that if you ask me because if you don't have the flowers there that these insects can feed upon you're not going to have the insects and then it all goes up in levels from there of course from the insects you'll have the small mammals you'll have all kinds of invertebrates below that of course but you have small mammals you'll have the birds you'll have the bigger mammals you'll have the raptor species and it just is one massive triangle of life that evolves around a wildflower meadow so you'll get birds of prey hunting for the voles you'll get things like barn owls tawny owls little owls uh, red kites buzzards uh, you'll get amphibians reptiles coming in here to eat the insects and smaller mammals and smaller invertebrates as well you'll get hedgehogs badgers foxes all finding food within a wildflower meadow you'll get bats hunting over this at night time which they do so it's an incredible place and something that we should all be trying to encourage within our own garden even if you've only got a small plot and my front garden is a prime example of that 20 square meters if you haven't seen the videos do check them out on the channel go to the home page hit my garden and you'll see some tours that i've done of the front garden 20 square meters that's all it is about five by four ish very roughly and my wildflower meadow is not even three square meters so and you can imagine the amount of life that is attracted to this because it's planted with the right plants and please do look at the online shop if you're looking for any wildflowers in the uk if you're looking to make any of these habitats the wildflower plugs seeds nine centimeter potted plants, all in peat free now, absolutely fantastic. Then do check out wildergarden.com and of course the usual pond liners, pond plants and everything else, which I'm happy to advise you on. If you need some help with the species and quantities for your wildlife pond, 
no problem at all, I'm here to help. But coming back to this meadow, it has absolutely thrived. It now has three species of orchid recorded on the site. We've got pyramidal orchids, we've got bee orchids, and we've got common spotted orchids. And they are absolutely growing in profusion. They're just everywhere. It's actually difficult to not tread on them, just getting to this spot in the meadow which is one that I manage every year. I come back and do one hay cut a year and that's all this meadow takes in terms of management. It's all it needs and after that, it's just left for the entire 12 months and look at it, it's absolutely thriving. We've got some really nice species in here. In the background, you can probably see a pink sort of hue over there. That's a beautiful plant called San Juan, which is absolutely adored by bees. There's bees even on it now as it's coming into the twilight hours absolutely fantastic to see insects as you can see just all around me uh, this yellow is all kidney vetch which is the larval food plant the sole larval food plant for uh, a very small butterfly the smallest butterfly in the uk which is indeed funnily enough the aptly named small blue which was released on this site in 2015 because I knew the conditions were right. I knew there's plenty of kidney vetch here because not only is it a larval food plant, it's also a nectar source for them as well. So a double whammy, bit like the bird's foot trefle for the common blue. So a fantastic, which is also on this site, both the bird's foot trefle and the common blue. Um, so it's great to see them proliferating there. It is the only known site now in Lincolnshire where they have not been recorded for over 150 years. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And they've now been here breeding every year for the last nine years. So a fantastic result and one that could only be achieved by stripping the topsoil and getting to these porous subsoil layers. Now, you don't have to do this on every job uh, or every meadow that you create. And I don't. I sometimes go and plant plants into a lawn and there's many, many ways you can manage your green space depending on how much light it has, what soil type is. There's lots of videos on the channel, so go check them out, guys. But this is something that is absolutely alive with life, and I cannot stress how much we need to be adopting a Nomo summer and creating habitats like this wherever possible. It's not just down to us as individuals. We need to be looking to do this in schools, in our parks and green spaces, on commercial premises, everywhere we can, because out there, beyond those hedges and native shrubs and trees, is an agricultural landscape that is intensely farmed. And I can say that without a shadow of a doubt because I can see it every time I drive around the country, which is a lot when I'm making habitats like this, as you can probably imagine. So the more we can do within our towns, cities, our urban areas, the more wildlife will adapt because it will. And it is incredibly adaptable to the situations that we force upon it, which is effectively us. So I really, really do hope that this message can be spread worldwide so that we can create more habitats like this and enjoy it. Because not only is it good for wildlife, it's good for us too. Just spending half an hour in this little one acre plot is just absolutely, I can't describe what it does to the soul. It's absolutely fantastic. And I think we should all have access to areas like this for our own well-being. There's many stresses in life which we all go through and I think this is the answer. Nature has always been there for every one of us. So I suggest if you're not already tuned into it, get a book, something like Wild Your Garden. But no, get a wildlife book. If you don't know anything about wildlife, get a little ID book for wherever you are around the world. Start noticing the butterflies, the bees and the insects and the birds that visit your garden and try and create a mini ecosystem because it really can be a thriving little oasis for wildlife wherever you are. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope that just seeing this meadow, meadow has lifted your spirits and given you some inspiration of what can be achieved and that it's not all doom and gloom in the world. I for one am certainly fighting to make more of these habitats and I'm doing so every single week of the year. And I know thousands of you around the world are watching these videos doing the same. So keep doing what you're doing, stay wild, and I will see you all very soon.